Um, sulfate was detected in the leak detection sump, but testing did not confirm the source. Uh, what we think is a small amount of material entered the sump during construction and caused the elevated numbers, um, but those numbers have been trending down and we are both watching that. So Superior Watership Partnership and Rio Tinto are watching that. You uh, mentioned uranium. Are you actually going to be mining and processing any of that out of this site? Uh, that makes a big difference on what's going to go on and how much of that's going to be exposed. How much, uh, is there going to be a lot of incidental uh, uranium picked up with the ore? Yeah, no, we are not mining uranium, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that on the next slide. Where, so in the first quarter of this year, um, under facilities monitoring again, is where they um, confirmed the uranium. Does that mean the liners leaked? The liners that are supposed to contain anything? No. No, it didn't mean that the liners leaked. Um, so uranium is a naturally occurring element. It is in the background um, all over the UP. And it, it's removed early in the treatment process. Kristen, do you want to address that? You can probably address it. Yeah, yeah. much better than I can. So the uranium was found right here with this red dot in the leak sum. And what we have here is we have this primary lining system. So that dark gray liner, that's our primary lining system and that holds all of the rock that on that storage facility. And then we have this leak detection sump in this other liner, the secondary liner underneath. And the reason for that is if for some reason this one ever leaked, we capture it. But we monitor the water levels in here at all times, and if we ever have to pump it out, we monitor the water quality. Um, when this incident occurred in the middle of March, uh, we had only pumped 35 gallons out of that sump for the year. So it gives you an idea of how much water we actually have in that sump. Um, what we have done is when we discovered sulfate down here, we added some indicator parameters that we monitor for. So we monitor for nitrates really, nitrogen compounds. We wouldn't expect those in the leak, leak sump, but if we found those, that because we do expect them in the contact sump. If we find those in the leak sump, that would indicate maybe we have some water passing through. At this time, the quantity of water, we've checked with liner experts, they've said no way, you know, that you just do not have enough water in that leak sump to possibly have a leak. So we also have, I failed to mention, Jerry Grant is here from Superior Watershed Partnership. Um, and if you have any questions about uh, the community environmental monitoring and how that is going um, or how these report cards um, are being developed or any information on the CEMP website, she's here to answer any questions. So Jerry, do you want to add anything to what Kristen said? Uh, no. Okay. So based on that information, um, one, one quick question. Yep. If we're ready to go with the boat. Yep, we are. Uh, I'm assuming that when we look at the exceeds, meets, below, etc. standard, these are our expectations, not the state's expectations, right? These are your expectations, okay. yes. I just want to you? add one comment. Um, I probably don't need the microphone, but when we detected the uranium um, in the leak detection sump of the temporary rock storage area. Um, we also tested the water treatment plant to make sure that that plant was not discharging uranium into the twist. Um, and we found that the reverse osmosis units and the other equipment that plant is equipped with is the best technology available for removing uranium from water. And we did um, confirm that there was no uranium in the effluent of the plant leaving the facility. It was fun to add that.